हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी शेल स्टार्ट विथ आर सेकेंड चैप्टर दैट इज प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट द फर्स्ट पॉइंट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज प्रोसेस कंसेप्ट सो वॉट इज अ प्रोसेस अ प्रोसेस इज अ प्रोग्राम इन एग्जीक्यूशन वेन वी राइट अ प्रोग्राम एंड वी सेव इट इट इज अ टेक्स्ट फाइल एंड वेन वी एग्जीक्यूट दिस टेक्स्ट फाइल इट बिकम्स अ प्रोसेस सो अ प्रोसेस इज अ प्रोग्राम इन एग्जीक्यूशन A process is defined as an entity which represents the basic unit of work to be implemented in the system. A process is an active entity as opposed to program which is considered to be a passive entity. We write computer programs in a text file and when we execute this program it becomes a process which performs all the tasks mentioned in the program. when a program is loaded in the into the memory and it becomes a process it can be divided into four sections stack heap text and data as you can see in the diagram when the program is shifted into the main memory the memory will be divided into four parts at the lowest part of the memory text will be saved upper to that data will be stored upper to that is the heap and at the last part of the memory will be a stack the space between the stack and heap is free so that it can be allocated for temporary variables now we shall see each part of memory in detail first part is stack stack is a data structure it contains the temporary data such as method or function parameters return address and local variables as you know stack data structure implements in push out pop out and push in which we have seen in last year the second part of the memory is heap this is dynamically allocated memory to a process during its run time third part is the text this includes the current activity represented by the value of program counter and the contents of the processor registers whenever a program is executed different values are stored in different registers this is maintained in the text section of the memory and the last section is the data this section contains the global and static variables whenever the program is executed the values of global and static variables keep on changing this is maintained in this last section of memory that is data so i hope you have understood what is a process whenever we execute a process the number of processes there will be a number of partitions in the memory next we'll move on to the very important part that is process states <clears throat> when a process executes it passes through different states the process from its creation to completion passes through various states the state of a process is defined in part by the current activity of that process so as you can see in the diagram a process can move from one state to another state in the diagram you can see the five states of a process new state ready state running state waiting state and terminated state we'll see each type of state in details the first state of the process is new this is the initial state when a process is first started the process is being created a program which is going to be picked up by the operating system into the memory is called a new process so for example if i tell that in your class i am going to take vivas so when you come for the vivas you will stand in the queue the first time i take you for viva the first question which i ask that means you are in a new state so the first state of any process is the new state second 
is the ready state the process is waiting to be assigned to a processor ready processes are waiting to have the processor allocated to them by the operating system so that they can run processes may come into this state after new state or while running it by but interrupted by the scheduler to assign cpu to some other process so processes are in ready state when they are about to go into the cpu for execution the third state is the running state once the process has been assigned to a processor by the operating system scheduler the process is set to running and the processor executes its instructions so when a process is inside the cpu and the instructions are being executed we say that the process is in running state next is the waiting state process moves into the waiting state if it needs to wait for a resource such as waiting for user input or waiting for a file to become available so when a process is being executed and it requires some input from the keyboard at that time we will say that the process is in a waiting state next the last state that is terminated state once the process finishes its execution or it is terminated by the operating system it is moved to the terminated state where it waits to be removed from the main memory that is when the program finishes its execution and we are going to remove it from the memory it is known as the terminated state so this is all about the five states of a process each and every process has to move through all these five states till it gets terminated next we are going to move on to process control block now what is a process control block while creating the process the operating system performs several operations to identify the process it, it assigns a process identification number pid to each process same like as we have a unique roll number to each and every student in the same way the operating system assigns a process identification number to each process as the operating system supports multi programming it needs to keep track of all the processes a process control block is a data structure used by a computer operating system to store all the information about the process it is also known as a process descriptor or task control block so the information of a particular process is stored in a process control block this process control block or pcb is also known as the process descriptor or task control block in the following diagram you can see the process control block that is what type of information is stored in this block so we can store a pointer to that process the different state in which the process is the process number program counter registers memory limits open file list and miscellaneous data like accounting and status data we shall see each of these in details so the first field of this block is the pointer it is a stack pointer which is required to be saved when the process is switched from one state to another to retain the current position of the process so this is a pointer same like we use a pointer in c or c++ to store the address in this case we are going to use this pointer to store the current position of the process second field of this pcb is process state it stores the respective state of the process this specifies the process state that is new ready running waiting or terminated 
so at a given time what is the state of this process the value is stored in this field that is process state the values may be new ready running waiting or terminated next the third field that is process number every process is assigned with a unique id known as the process id or pid which stores the process identifier this shows the number of the particular process so as explained to you earlier this pid is also a field of pcb that is process control block next field of pcb is program counter it stores the counter which contains the address of the next instruction that is to be executed for a process you already know that program counter is a register which stores the address of the next instruction which is to be executed so program counter is an important field of pcb that is process control block next field is register these are the cpu registers which includes accumulator base registers and general purpose registers so in the electronics part you know that when a program is being executed the values are stored in different cpu registers so the values of these cpu registers will be maintained in this register field of process control block next field memory limits this field contains the information about memory management system used by operating system this may include the page tables segment tables etc so in the previous lectures we had seen for memory protection the fence registers that is the values of the base registers and the limit registers these values are also maintained in this memory limits field of pcb next is open files list this information includes the list of files opened by a process so the process may require different types of files so how many files this process has used or is using is maintained in this field of open files list next field cpu scheduling information the process priority pointers to scheduling queues etc is the cpu scheduling information that is con contained in the pcb so every process is given a priority on which basis it will be executed this point will be discussed later in cpu scheduling next field input output status information this includes the list of input output devices used by the process and the list of files which are being used by the given process and the last field accounting information the time limits or account numbers amount of cpu used process numbers etc are part of the pcb accounting information so all these are the different parts of the process control block next we'll move on to context switching in computing a context switch is the process of storing the state of a process or thread so that it can be restored and resume execution at a later point this allows multiple processes to share a single cpu or is an essential feature of a multitasking operating system so you can see that in a multi processing or multitasking operating system there will be more than one processes in the cpu for execution so you can see that if process y wants to execute we have to remove process x from the cpu and put process y in the cpu so when moving on from process x to process y we have to switch the context context is nothing but the information of process x and when process y will come into the cpu its context has to be switched now what is the need for this context switching as i have already told you all multitasking or multi processing is used for context switching following are the reasons that describe the need for context switching in the operating system first is 
द स्विचिंग ऑफ वन प्रोसेस टू एन अदर प्रोसेस इज नॉट डायरेक्टली डन इन द सिस्टम अ कॉन्टेक्ट स्विचिंग हेल्प द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम दैट स्विचेज बिटवीन द मल्टीपल प्रोसेसिस टू यूज द सी पी यूज रिसोर्स टू अकम्पलिश इट्स टास्क एंड स्टोर इट्स कॉन्टेक्सट If a higher priority process falls into the ready queue the currently running process will be shut down or stopped by a high priority process to complete its task in the system suppose now one process is being executed by the cpu at the same time another process comes which has a higher priority so the previous process has to be halted or stopped and the cpu has to be shifted to the higher priority process when this higher priority process finishes its execution the previous process which was stopped in between has been has to be taken again for execution but it will not it start its execution from the first statement itself it will stop start its execution where it had stopped so that information will be stored in the context switch if any running process requires input output resources in the system the current process will be switched by another process to use the cpu another condition where we might require a context switch is now process a is being executed suppose that process a wants to give out print out or wants to give an output so till we take the print out or till we give the output another we can take another process for execution so this process a will be removed from the cpu and process b will be taken for execution so in this case we will again require a context switch that is the cpu has to switch its information from process a to process b so this is another condition where we can require a context switch if any interrupts occur while running a process in the operating system the process status is saved as registers using context switching okay so the last condition may be when we require an interrupt for example when the operating system wants to shift from user mode to kernel mode we can give an interrupt or if there may be some system call we will require to switch the context of the processes so these are the four conditions where we might require a context switch now context switching will require some triggers there are three triggers for context switching following are the three types of context switching triggers first is the interrupt as discussed previously interrupt or any system call we we have to shift the context when an interrupt occurs the hardware automatically switches a part of the context only some of the context is changed to minimize the time required to handle the interrupt the second trigger is multitasking as i have already told you all when we have to execute more than one programs at a time we have to switch among the different programs so when switching we will require a context switch context switch can be triggered by the process making itself unrunnable such as waiting for an input output in a multitasking environment a process is switched out of the cpu so another process can be run the state of the old process is saved and the state of the new process is loaded and the last type of trigger user and kernel mode switching a context switch may take place when a transition between the user mode and kernel mode is required in the operating system so these are the three triggers which are fired when we require a context switch thank you